10 to 15 minutes, we will run through the IBC requirements for masonry, steel, and wood. Um, again, this is this will be a lot of look up on the exam, but I want you to at least understand um, the intentions. Oh, oh no, it's not five. Sorry. Um, so I want you to understand the intention behind the code. So like with the foundations, I think the main takeaway there is um, really just this basic reinforcing, and then that you need to have a geotechnical report in um, these in California. And then for moment frames and shear walls, um, the strong column we've seen, and the confinement. Okay, so let's dive into masonry. Um, okay, so masonry actually has a lot of requirements, and we haven't talked too much about masonry in our other um, topics, so we'll run through it here. So the requirements for masonry are based on the ACI 530-11 building code requirements. I do not think that you need this code. I know I took it with me for the national PE. Um, for this, you just need these IBC requirements, um, which are based on this document. If you have it, take it. There's no real harm in that. Um, but I think you should be good with the IBC chapter 21. So one thing to note for the reinforcing requirements for um, these masonry walls, the reinforcing requirements are separated by vertical and horizontal requirements. And we're going to go through um, what those are. Uh, again, because I don't think you need to take in this document. And then again here, you'll see that the bearing wall and bearing frame, or bearing wall and building frame requirements, uh, or not requirements, but <laughs> um, ductility values differ from each other. So um, the bearing wall, R, will be 5, and the building frame will be 5 and a half. So you'll see these aren't the most ductile systems. They're even considered less ductile than the special reinforced um, concrete shear walls. So that had a six here for building frame. Okay, 